This is Craig Terrell, called Tippecanoe Country. He's in the studio with us right now. 30 miles north of Tippecanoe County, cornfields far as the eye can see. And a rusted out truck from 1987 just riding my brother and me. Pretty good stuff. Really good. Uh, very, very well recorded. It's really nice to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you again. You know, and I'm really glad you didn't call yourself, um, uh, what was it, uh, Craig Cougar. Terrell Seahawk Camp or whatever it was. <laughs> training camp. It's, it's training camp. <laughs> Craig Terrell Training Camp is what we're going to come yeah, up yeah. with. But that, yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. And you also have Mike Mattingly with you. Mike is the uh, Mike plays with the Herding Cats and plays on your record as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Craig, uh, other than the bump in the road last Saturday in Green Bay, you have been one happy Seahawk, I hear. I've been very happy, you know, especially the last half of the season where we kind of got things put together and got on the right track. And uh, obviously, we're very disappointed we uh, couldn't keep the momentum rolling in the playoffs uh, at Lambeau. But you know, um, I think we did some great things towards the end of the year and uh, kind of. Now, to those of us who, um, well, all of us watched. Well, but... I've, well, I've got the game taped. I haven't seen it yet, so don't spoil the end. <laughs> <laughs> if you would. Let's see, I, should uh, be meetings, I should be in meetings right now, so I won't. Uh, to those of us who all suffered through it, and especially Joe, who li- literally is, you know, the kind of fan, one of those fans who actually personally gets depressed. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I got to be honest fans. with you. I'm there. Yeah. I'm for you. When I'm seeing it to blow out, I'm like, oh well, you know, I got this good. I can do something else next next Saturday. But Joe literally came in. He's having trouble getting out of bed in the morning. Awfully depressed. A couple days. Yeah. Cabin it's... fever. So for guys like him. Um, how do you, first off, how and when? As Spike had the question, when? How and when do you figure out what went wrong? Like, do you not have a meeting till next year to go over that? Uh, do you just say, "All right, t- go on vacation"? And could you offer any insights as to either what broke down that could have, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda, or perhaps um, just how fantastic uh, Green Bay played and and maybe was really deserving this year, which I think they were. Yeah, I will agree with you there that, that you know the momentum they got going in that game. Um, you know, we kind of went up fourteen nothing and just we we're like we're gonna kill these guys, we're gonna blow them out. You know, we're going. You did have that feeling. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was just bam like that fourteen nothing, and um, they they you know compliment to them, they kept their composure, which is what great teams do. They settled down, they drove the ball down, scored, drove the ball down, scored. It's tied up. And then you know, and that's demoralizing when you've spotted is. a fourteen point lead and it's gone. It is and before the second quarter starts. And f- football in general is all momentum, and especially playoff football. So once they started to build, we uh, we needed to step up and, and and shut them down a little bit, and and we never got it done. They just kept going the whole game. You know, all going into last week, and I'm I'm with Joe. It was it was a, a heartbreaker, gut killer. It was a, a kick to the jimmies. Going into last week's game, all we kept hearing about in the media, he look at him, he's like, oh, I cleaned my gutter. Well, he Casey shrugged thing. when you said kick to the jimmies. So well, I don't know if she knows what that is. Well, I'll come in and show <laughs> I can you. Imagine. You can use mine. i got a couple extra pair. Um, going into last week's game, all I kept hearing about as a fan was Green Bay's got no playoff experience. We got all the playoff. We got 240 combined games on our roster of playoff experience. They're, they're the youngest team in the NFL. All those things that kind of add up to whatever goes on the field, there's these intangibles that they were all leaning our way. But like you said, when it came time to gut check, they seemed to be the team. And I don't mean to, you know, it, I wasn't there. I wasn't on the field. I didn't have cleats. By the way, Spike has a different on. reaction from Joe. Instead of Joe gets depressed, Spike gets angry. I get real <laughs> mad. Um, were you sh- were you stunned that they had so much composure? I was. You know, I, you look you look at the Green Bay team last year, and you kind of think these guys weren't that good. How how are they? You know, have the bye week? How do they at the home playoff game? But when I went back and watched their last, you know, like six games of last season, they were the youngest team in the league and had everybody coming back for this year. And they played really well all through last season and then all through this season. You know, in the play in the pre preseason, even they were just playing as a good, you know, even though they're young, as a good composed, um, you know, very efficient football team. And and obviously Brett Favre had the best best year in probably his career. So to see. Um, when when you have guys around a, a guy like Brett Favre and they're playing up to his level, he brings those young guys up with him. It's just it, you know it's a tough team to well, beat at and, home. And home. sometimes being young, especially in the running back position, isn't such a bad thing. I no, mean, no, not at all. I mean, you got a young guy who's going to bang through there. 
give me an idea of what it's like uh, to be in such miserable weather. I mean, I, I personally, I was, I grabbed a blanket and I was home in my, in, uh, you know, in my home theater, and I'm like, this is cold. Uh, to actually be out in there, how much difference does that make? And of course, it's fair because it makes the same difference for both teams. Yeah, cold wise, it wasn't. I wasn't cold the entire game. You weren't. No, I didn't have any sleeves on. You know, the D line we made a no sleeves rule going into the week just because that's a you know kind of testament to your manhood. Uh, the manhood D-line. thing comes yeah. into play. Yeah, so Josh. Josh had some sleeves well, on. Yeah, Eric too. Yeah, battery pants. Like battery pants. pants. Uh, I wasn't going to bring up the electric pants, but he had didn't, sleeves didn't, on. Didn't he have the electric ball warmers? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think those are banned because they could short circuit and hurt yeah, bad. You so. know, that's just an accident. Nobody wants to see on the sideline. But I mean, I think uh, I think the only place where the weather hurt us was they got a lead on us, and then it was just a blizzard all of a sudden. And we were trying to play catch up in a blizzard, which isn't obviously the best conditions. If you're trying to throw the ball, if you're down trying to play catch up, you have to yeah. take a few more I mean, chances. You take and, shots down the yeah. field, and, and you couldn't see from the sideline to the middle of the field. It was yeah. snowing that hard. And I blame the weatherman a little for that loss because that blizzard came from nowhere. I was watching the National Weather Service hourly leading up to that game. It was supposed to be just a few flurries. I mean, that was never. Brett Favre says it was the biggest snow he's played in in his 17. Well, years. you're religious. You should blame God. Or he Vince snuck Lombardi that in. or somebody. Yeah. yeah. No, no, some voodoo guy's got a doll made of bratwurst sticking Seahawk pins in it the whole game. I could see it. Did you hear about that guy who um, who forced his kid to this, wear? This guy in Green Bay, his kid didn't want to wear a Packer jersey. This guy held his kid down, taped crying. his kid down, crying, and taped a jersey to him. Wow. I'm glad I'm, for at that at that moment. I'm glad they won. What would this kid be facing had they lost? Yeah, <laughs> no, they're nuts up there. You know, we were pulling out in our buses, and obviously, you know that that. It was over, you know, and and they're pelting us with snowballs as we're going down the road to the airport. So they're uh, they're crazy. All right, now you're um, you've always played uh, very well and very hard for the team. And uh, Joe tells me you just got a three year contract extension. Yep. And a PHAT raise, right? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, they, uh, Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. They definitely took care of me. You know, as a it's kind of as a six round pick coming in the league. Again. Now, are you going to be responsible with the money? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You got no seriously. You got like some people just you know immediately get six hummers and yeah, and uh, it's sad to see what a lot of guys you know the mistakes they make once they you do make money in the NFL and especially if they come right into the NFL to college and just make a ton of money. I was kind of a guy that had to work on the team every year, so I, I you know was pinching every penny. But um, you know now that I actually got a good contract, you know, I, I'm curious about this because I've I've been told in football it's a little different than other sports. I, even though you um, you have a three year contract, if you're injured badly, you don't necessarily get all of that, right? So oh, you've no. got to just. I mean, the 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 more you have, the more you have to lose, and you have to protect yourself somewhat. At the same time, you have to fight hard and play hard in order to earn the position. How do you balance that? Well, the only thing that's guaranteed in NFL contracts is your signing bonus. The what you get. That yeah, the you initial. Get a lump, you get a lump sum up front, and then, and then they you, all have a uh, they all have a uh, if you um, bet on dog fighting clause now too. All right? of them, even for giving that back. You're gonna owe that. You're gonna owe that money back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do you uh, how do you like? It's so, I guess for all football players, you have to you have to take care of yourself, not get injured badly. At the same time, you have to go out there and do stuff that would put me in the chiropractic office for a month if I even did it once. Yeah, my the probably the best thing that's worked for me throughout my career is you never get comfortable. You know, once you once you think you're a member of the team and you're you're kind of untouchable and they wouldn't cut you, you're out the door. So if you're walking in the facility every day thinking I better work my butt off or you know they might cut me today, then uh, it's going to keep you around.